So let's try that all again. I'm sorry for that, but such are the vagaries of the internet, uh, certainly during COVID lockdown. I am Keith Barron. I'm the chairman and CEO of Urania Resources, and I'll be walking you through today our projects in Ecuador and Peru. Thanks for joining. I will be making forward-looking statements, so be forewarned. We have got our hands full, uh, half a million acres equivalent to 208,000 hectares down in southeastern Ecuador and South America near the border with Peru. And all of these things here are advanced projects. The big red one here is ours, but there's a lot of activity uh, elsewhere here in Ecuador. You've probably heard of Fruta del Norte, uh, Lunding Gold's deposit down here, Solaris, has an advanced copper porphyry project right in here. Soul Gold has the Cascabel project up in here. Suffice it to say, Ecuador is a very, uh, very hot jurisdiction right now, and it is receiving a lot of worldwide notice. It's a great place to be. Um, don't be intimidated by this. It's a geological map, but I'm going to be geolite on you. <laughs> Um, this is the geological belt coming through here. It's on there. Here's the, the high Andes. We're on the back side of the Andes. It's in what's called uh, a back arc rift. And the uh, property is outlined here in red. It's comprising mostly sediments and volcanics. And the trend goes down through like this. It's kind of north, north, east, south, southwest. This area has been heavily prospected. And why? because all of this orange here represents granite, and deposits here of gold and of copper have essentially been eroded down to their roots. You only see little scabs of the sediment and volcanics sitting on top here, the, the kind of dark blue and the purple lying on top here, because most of the deposits have been eroded away, the gold deposits such that there's lots and lots of gold alluvials in the creeks down here. That's what brought the prospectors in, Going back to the 1920s, in this area, it hasn't been so dissected by erosion, and the systems are intact. So you get uh, sinters on the top of epithermal gold-silver systems. You get lithocaps on the top of porphyry copper systems. These things are intact. They're harder to find because they're not outcropping, but we have a lot of tricks up our, our sleeves. So uh, I'll go on here. I'm going to toot my horn a little bit here because I am the co-founder of Virilian Resources, which I started back in 2001 privately and took public in 2003, and then eventually was sold on to Kinross uh, for $1.2 billion. And that was the, on the back of the discovery of the Fruta del Norte gold deposit in 2006. It's now in production by Lundin Gold, and they're very, very successfully sending lovely bricks of gold and silver offshore and uh, and generated a lot of income for the, the company and a lot of income for Ecuador in the form of taxes. Everybody has to pay taxes. Richard Spencer is my presence and he is responsible for discovery of most of the porphyry copper deposits to the south of us, uh, including Mirador, which is in production right now. The Chinese have a big open pit mine there. He also uh, ran I Am Gold in Ecuador for a number of years and was responsible for the Loma Larga gold-silver discovery elsewhere in Ecuador. Suffice it to say that the two of us know our business. We've been kicking around Ecuador for a lot of years, roughly about 20 years for both of us, and uh, it's familiar territory to us, and we're getting it done. This is my last company, Aurelian Resources, and look at this. This is kind of a a reverse ski slope here. It's going up, and it says here we went from thirty cents to forty dollars. We actually went to a high of forty-three dollars. That was a ten thousand percent increase for the shares. It made a lot of shareholders a lot of money. It made me money because I was a larger shareholder at the takeout. Thank you, God. <laughs> uh, but it 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 was provided me with the seed money to do what we're doing here today with the new company, Arania. This is what can happen in the exploration space when you make discovery and you suddenly turn something that is uh, basically a, 
uh, a bunch of swamp and uh, uninteresting uh, jungle into something pot potentially worth many, many billions, billions with a B of dollars. I am a big proponent and believer of this thing called the Lassonde Exploration Curve. Pierre Lassonde put this together about 20 years ago. And essentially what it means is that in early exploration, your valuation is pretty low. When you discover something, it suddenly shoots up. And then you have a bit of a lull here uh, while it's being engineered and developed. You're building the mine, and then it shoots up again here when you're actually producing gold or silver or copper or whatever. Optimally, you want to sell on here. And why? Because the chances today, today, and I know uh, Pierre put this together a long time ago, but today, uh, cycles, business cycles, and po political cycles are shorter than the time it takes to get a mine up and running. It can take 10 years to get a mine up and running. In the case of, of Fruta del Norte, it took uh, actually even longer than that. So the chances are good that whoever makes the discovery down here is not going to be the person who's going to get the profit in here uh, with uh, production. It's not going to be the same people. The chances are you're going to go through a business cycle and you're going to get whipsawed. So you try to make the most money you can and the best deal that you can for the shareholders by spinning it off here, spin off companies or JV or uh, a sale, a part of the project. Now, because we have different commodities and a very, very large land package, it gives us optionality that we can split the thing up and we can send one thing to one direction, one thing to another direction. And uh, in that way, the shareholders get uh, multiple bites at the apple. That's what I want to do here. So this is a, 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 a chart for soul gold. It's in pence. Um, now, no offense to Soul Gold, but they haven't been able to get back up here to uh, where their high was, which was based on discovery, and they're going through this, uh, this lull here, and all power to them. I hope they actually get to production and they get to, to uh, realize the profit here. So, uh, we have multiple targets ready. We've been at this for almost four years, and I consider that the heavy lifting has already been done because we've done geophysics, we've done geochemistry, we've done geological mapping, and now we're at the stage to drill a lot of our different projects. We have 20 epithermal type gold targets, 32 porphyry copper silver type targets, and 23 kilometer long uh, copper and silver in sediments, 23 kilometers, that's 16 miles of length. Now, here we go. This is just started last Saturday. We started drilling one of our porphyry copper targets. So the ch what we want to do here, we want to drill three to five holes on each of maybe four targets, and then we'll move on. Uh, we'll decide, we'll have a, a, a reappraisal of the results and decide what we're going to do next. But we have a whole host of things uh, to tackle right now, uh, including uh, a bunch of gold, uh, silver prospects that I, I really, really am anxious to get some drill holes on. But first things first, we're targeting here right now because we're working in an area that's uh, COVID free. And so the, uh, the gents are able to bring the drill in and, and get to work. This is the Terrier Shimpia prospect. This is a very interesting project in the portfolio. And this is silver in soils. And you can see it goes up greater than 0 0.25 grams per ton. That's the same as PPM here in the soils. This is a structure here. It's that black line that runs down like this. And it's about 15 kilometers long. And this is a very, very strong system. And it's a big system. And it's going to take some time to evaluate it fully and see what it is. But gosh, it's a real whopper. And I'm very, very pleased with it. Now, this is soil antimony. Antimony is a pathfinder element for gold, like arsenic, like thallium, like tellurium, like selenium. 
but in this case, this is antimony. And again, here, uh, the, cut, uh, the, the, uh, the interval is different here, but this is 10.6 ppm. And you can see lots and lots and lots of purple in here. Now, it's rather interesting. I was reading this morning that uh, 30 parts per million of antimony in soil is actually toxic for earthworms. And as much as I love earthworms, I, 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 the reason I mention this, uh, and I, I'm sorry for the poor little guys, but uh, this is a natural system. There's no pollution here. Nobody has done any previous mining or anything like that. But this is a very, very strong system. Uh, the typical content for antimony in soils in uh, all across the USA is less than one part per million. And this is shooting up well in excess of 10. So this is a very, very strong thing. We're very happy with this. It ha needs and requires a lot of dedicated work. This is copper and sediment. The, uh, the hammer here is about uh, two feet in length. It's one of the, uh, the longer styles. And you can see beautiful green here, just like the roof of, a, of, a, of a, an old uh, church. And when you break it in half, you see these layers in it. And the black here is a mineral called tenorite, uh, and also calcasite. These are copper minerals, and they're lying in the bedding plane of the sediments. So this is uh, a type of deposit which is uh, controlled, stratigraphically controlled by bedding within uh, rocks that were laid down uh, in a shallow ocean originally. Sandstone, shales, things like that. And this is very analogous to a deposit called the Kuferschiefer, which is in eastern Germany and into Poland, and it's being mined today by KGHM, the National Pol Polish Mining Company, and they are number two in the world for silver production and number eight in the world for copper production based on stuff like this. This sample here is running about 9% copper and about uh, 100 grams per ton of silver, and that's uh, a great number. Now, we followed this stuff. We decided to be a little bit opportunistic, and we figured out, because we had the goods on it, uh, we had done the geological work, and we knew where uh, the, uh, the copper and the silver was sitting in the sediments, and we just followed it across the border into Peru. And it's not called the same horizon here. They give it a different name, but here it is. And all these yellow blobs here are areas of, we think, high potential. High potential can, to contain the same sort of mineralization. Following right up here and then right across the border. There's a national park in here, so there's a bit of a gap. We haven't followed it all the way through because you can't stake in there. But this is over 400,000 hectares of land, which is more than double uh, well, is approximately double what we already have. A huge, huge land package still to be uh, checked out. This is what the breakdown looks like on our capital structure. We've kept it nice and tight over the years. We have 41 million shares, outstanding, 46 uh, on a fully diluted basis. Uh, this was prepared a couple of days ago. We were at $4.55 with a market cap of $186 million. And, uh, you know, some people say that we're uh, kind of overpriced against our peers, but how many peers do we? How many people in the junior mining space have a property like this? Today, you could not put a property like this together. You could not, you couldn't buy it for love nor money. Uh, <laughs> But uh, we've, got, we've got the goods and we're going to be, uh, we're exploring it as diligently as possible. Now, uh, the shareholder composition, you see insiders here in blue, 48% of that is actually me. Uh, I do not draw a salary from the company. I consider myself to be completely aligned with the shareholders. I've been in the business for 36 years and I intend to make this a winner. This is a... Uh, sadly, a picture that you see all over the world today, this is our new reality, 
and uh, but these are our local stakeholders on the project down in Ecuador. They're members of the Shuar indigenous community, and the Shuar have been occupying uh, this piece of, of land uh, for literally uh, thousands of years. And um, you can see they're all wearing the COVID masks that we've been we provided to them. Um, it's very important for us uh, to, uh, you know, on certainly a company, a corporate social responsibility basis uh, to provide uh, for the needs of our neighbors here uh, in the COVID epidemic, which uh, caught them completely unawares. We've taken in 18 tons of food relief. We fed over a thousand families and we're continuing uh, uh, to do this. But not only is it corporately the right thing to do on a personal level, it's the right thing to do as well. And I have a, um, a foundation um, that's uh, a personal foundation uh, because I realize the need here and I don't want to burden the company with all the expenses of of, of doing various projects for the community. So I've taken on some things uh, in partnership with uh, Arania, and we're having a tremendous amount of success, and I'm very, very proud of this. Uh, this is um, just last weekend, the foundation visited uh, this small community, and we were giving them uh, some uh, lectures on hand washing, the importance of hand washing uh, to uh, keep everyone safe from the COVID. This is another settlement that we visited also on the weekend, but this is a communal shower that we put up. It's kind of small, but there aren't a lot of people living in this place. Um, they have never enjoyed um, fresh drinking water really since the uh, village was uh, founded going back about 40 years. And the reason being uh, livestock has strayed into the, the water sources and polluted it. And now they suffer from things like E. coli and various other things. Paso Adelante is my, my foundation. Equisolidus is the holding company for Arania within Ecuador. And here are the little tots here enjoying fresh water uh, for the first time out of a faucet for a very, very a long time, if ever, for them anyway. So that's a fantastic thing. And here was the opening ceremony on uh, the initiation of the water, turning on the faucet, and everyone's giving the thumbs up here. Uh, I just wanted to throw this one in at the very end. Now, as I said, these are our stakeholders, but potentially these are people who are going to be working at the mine many, many years from now, Whichever mine it is, hopefully we're going to make a discovery here. But I was doing this sort of thing back in 2003 and 2004. And the children who are this age are now, uh, a lot of them, either working at Fruta del Norte or working in services that are providing for Fruta del Norte. So uh, they're actually drawing some pictures here for a national competition uh, put together by the Chamber of Mines of Ecuador on uh, sustainable developments, and they were asked to draw some pictures, and both of them, I, don't, I guess they got their inspiration in the same place, because they've got pictures of miners with ore carts full of gold, and uh, maybe this little girl wants to be a, a, an airline stewardess or a pilot or something, little Maria, but isn't this a wonderful thing? And so uh, I'm, I'm pleased as punch that... Uh, uh, we're, uh, we're changing lives and, uh, and doing the right thing here. And um, well, really, that wraps up my presentation. And I thank you so much for your attention and uh, your interest in our company. If you have any questions, please, by all means, fire me an email, and I will do my very best uh, to attempt to, to answer it. Thank you. God bless. And please stay safe.